Good morning guys, Larry the Tractor Guy here. We're gonna be working in the shop this morning looking at a couple of balers. Pretty windy out this morning, it's about 50 degrees. We had a pretty major windstorm blow through last night. We've got some really good alfalfa that's growing really fast right now. I've got a customer that's got some really good uh, irrigated alfalfa. And so we'll be getting our first cutting of hay off here shortly and uh, we'll have these balers in the field and running. So this morning we're going to be looking at, first we're going to be looking at an L340. And this baler, I believe, has got about 15,000 bales on it. Here's our L340. And we've had it in the shop doing some work. Um, we've had a little bit of trouble with this rocker shaft here and this arm, which drives this feeding system. And what this feeding system does is it basically loads this pre-chamber with hay and sends a flake of hay into the baler to make our bale. So what we've had with this rocker arm here is this bolt getting loose and wearing the splines out on this, on this arm, okay? So we've put a new arm on, a new shaft, and got that all tightened up and secured. Uh, went through all of our components on our feeding device here. What this mechanism does is it latches and unlocks during bailing. So we've got two options on this L340 and also on the L341s where we can change this selector arm on the side of the baler on the left hand side. We can change it either to one to one or into auto. And when we're in one to one, what that does is it loads the pre-chamber once and then sends a flake of hay. If we run that at auto, it basically fills that pre-chamber up with a good flake of hay before it sends it into the bell chamber. Typically, we like to run that in auto if all possible. And then also what we're gonna look at today and do a little work on, we are going to replace this selector arm. What this selector arm does is it gauges our bell length. Okay, and so we can move this knob up or down to select the length of the bell that we would like, whether we would want a six foot long, seven foot long, eight foot long, however long we want that bell, we can adjust that here. So some of the problems we've had with this particular baler after a, <clears throat> quite a few bells have been ran through it, this selector arm has teeth, kind of notches, in this section of the selector arm that is driven by this wheel. And this little wheel is actually driven by what we like to call a star wheel. So as the bell is coming through the bell chamber, it's driving this wheel, driving this shaft, driving this little pulley, and moving this selector arm. But what we've seen happen a few times is this selector arm would skip Okay, and so it would fall back down and start over again, which would result in a longer than normal bite. We're going to replace this selector arm. Also, when we get done with that, we will go over some tips on the knotter system. And we'll take a look at that later on and show you guys a few little quick tips about, about these knotters on the L340. Then also today, We'll take a look at this L341. That's a new baler that'll be going out to the field. And we'll make some adjustments on this baler. Take a look at this L L341 here and, and uh, get it ready to go to the field as well. Back on the L340 baler here, we've got our new selector arm installed. Got it nice and tight and working smoothly. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to make a few adjustments to our knotter system. One of the things that we're gonna do on this baler is we're going to adjust our upper twine tensioners. So on these upper twine tensioners, and I'll show you here in a few moments what we're gonna do to adjust this tension. So we've got our twine through what we call the upper slack arm. And the tensioners are on the back side of this shield. So these are our twine tensioners right there. These bolts with these springs. Okay, and so to loosen the twine tension, we would back those off evenly. And then to increase the twine tension, we would tighten those up evenly. I don't know if you can see, but there is a little, there's a little wheel in there 
with um, sort of like two gears. The twine goes in between those and that's how we create twine tension. And we'll get a little better look at those on the bottom side where we can actually see those. We want about 14 to 16 pounds of pressure to pull that twine through the upper twine tensioners, okay? And so what we, what I really like to see is as soon as this slack arm contacts this bar, we want that to start feeding twine. And so what I mean by that is when we pull the twine down and that upper slack arm contacts that bar, that is the point in which we would like to see it feed twine. So these are pretty, pretty tight. So we may be loosening these twine tensioners off just a little bit. I like to use a fish scale. I'll show you that here in a few moments. So we're gonna use this fish scale to adjust this twine arm tension. One thing to keep in mind is when we're working on these three by four balers and we have somebody up inside of the bale chamber, Okay, let's make sure that we engage this brake so that that flywheel doesn't turn, okay? And the brake is right here, this red handle. Okay, and it engages this brake pad here, okay? To keep that from turning because the plunger inside of this bell chamber is big and it is heavy. And so if that plunger happened to move when a guy was up inside of this bell chamber uh, you know it, it could cause some pretty good injuries be sure that lock that brake. So we're adjusting twine tension on this l340 got sammy down here in the bell chamber assisting me a little bit with this twine tension adjustment and he's basically down there with a set of fish scales and we're checking the poundage of what it takes to start feeding twine out of the twine tensioner. All right, Larry, number five is like 25 pounds. So number five is 25 pounds. Okay, so we're gonna have to adjust number five and get it somewhere between 14 and 15 pounds. Now we're on number six. Number six is about 19 pounds. Number six is 19 pounds. Okay guys, so we're up in the bell chamber. We got Sammy here with a fish scale and he's gonna turn that fish scale kind of where we can see it. And as you can see what we're doing is we're hooking that twine to the fish scale and then we're pulling that fish scale down. And if you can see that dial there, it's a little hard to see. Okay, we're not feeding twine until right out about 18 to 20 pounds. So that number five is pretty tight. Okay, and so we really need to back the, that twine tensioner off. And what that does is creates a lot of knotter problems when we get those twine tensioners too tight. And then also up on the display, it doesn't register and read correctly. I'm gonna put my gear wrench on the bolt for the number five. And we're gonna back that off a few rounds evenly and try to get our 14 to 16 pounds a pull on that number five tensioner. Okay, Sammy, try that and see where we're at. A little bit more. It's about 16 it's now. A, it's about 16 now, he says. So we're going to back it off just a little more. 14. Okay, we're right at about 14 pounds on number five now. Okay, let's check number six twine there, Sammy. It's about 16. It's about 16. So if we're right up between 14 and 16, we can call it good. So we've got all six upper twine tensioners adjusted between 14 and 16 pounds of pull through the tensioner. So I see this a lot, a lot of times when customers are out in the field running these balers and they have a potential knotter problem on, a, on one through six or you know, if they have a problem on one or five or six, the first thing a lot of people like to do is start tightening up tensioners. Well, that's not always the problem. And sometimes you can create a bigger problem when you just start tightening tensioners for no reason. One quick thing that I've found that works pretty good when you've got hay in the bell chamber, you can't always get up in there with a set of fish scales and check this twine tension. So something I like to do out in the field is grab this twine and pull it down. As soon as it bumps that rod right there, it should start feeding twine, okay? If it bumps that rod super hard 
and it's not feeding twine, then that tensioner is way too tight, okay? Or if we pull that down and the slack arm never even gets close to that rod and makes a bump, then it's too loose. Quick reminder that you can do that out in the field pretty quick too. We're on the lower side of the baler now on the lower twine tensioners. When I was talking earlier about these these twine tensioners, that's what the twine tensioner actually looks like is those two gears that the twine is running through. Okay, and that's your two springs that adjust your twine tensioner. We're checking the lower twine tensioners and we should be somewhere around 20 to 24 pounds to pull twine through that tension. About 23. So Sammy says number one's at about 23, which is good. We're gonna run through the next five tensioners here. Kind of made us a quick loop here and readjusted our, our fish scale so that we could kind of see where the tensioners are at. So we're gonna run down through those real quick and get those all adjusted about the same. Sammy's gonna put a load on it. That one's only about 17, so. So that one's about 17, so we probably ought to tighten that one down. And I think in the book, it shows to tighten these nuts evenly, one flat at a time. And so usually I'll put my gear wrench on here, okay? And I'll just go like this, about a quarter of a round, okay? Just about like that. Sometimes I'll do about four quarters, which is, you should be about a round, okay, on each one of those nuts. So we'll check it again there. About 20 right there. So we're right at about 20 there, okay? And so we're doing this kind of in a different way because it's easier to put a load on that and get those tensioners adjusted evenly the way that Sammy's got the fish scale attached there, okay? That one's right at 20. Okay, and so the reason being is because when we're running through this lower slack arm, as you can see, it's really hard to pull that up and get a good reading on that fish scale, okay? And so we'll check a few of these after we, after we get all of them adjusted evenly the same. And it's the same principle out in the field when you can't use fish scales. What we like to see is for this slack arm to come up and bump before it feeds twine or somewhere close to that. That one's 15. Okay. So number five is 15. Go ahead and tighten that one down about a quarter of a round on each side, about four times on each on each spring, and that should bring us up pretty close. It, it got broke. us up there about 19 probably. Yeah, it broke right about 19, 20. Okay, so. so we'll call that one good. We're gonna run through all of these a few times and we'll check back in with you in just a little bit. So we've got our upper and lower twine tensioners adjusted the way that we want them. I wanted to point out is talk about the knotter assembly itself just a little bit. And so what I found a lot of times is when we have knotter problems, okay, of missed ties or we miss the first knot or the second knot. Um, and what I mean by that is this is a double knotter system. And so what happens is, is when the needle underneath carries the twine up into the knotter, it ties a knot on the way in and then ties a knot on the way out. And I'll explain that to you a little bit more in detail at the bottom of the baler in a few moments. But back to this twine tension, when these twine tensioners are too tight, okay, it causes a lot of extra strain and a lot of extra wear on this knotter assembly. So real quick, I'm gonna raise number five up where you can kind of see the bill hook. Looking at the bill hook, and I'll show you a damaged bill hook in a few moments, but this bill hook has this little this little hook on it. When your twine is going through and making a knot, if we've got a lot of extra tension on those twine tensioners that we just adjusted, it puts a lot of strain on this bill hook. This is the wiper arm and the wiper plate. And there's also an adjustment for that that I'll talk about in a few moments. But when that wiper arm comes across the face of that bill hook, 
Okay, that's what wipes the knot off of the bill hook and creates our knot. The wiper arm, as you can see, rubs across, if you can see there, the face of this bill hook. And what I like to see is for that, when it comes across and we're looking at this adjustment, and this is actually the way we would make this adjustment, by pulling the pin and raising this knotter assembly up. Okay, and so we got that bill hook right there, and it's kind of making pretty good contact about right there on the face of that, of that bill hook, okay? And so what I like to see is for that to be pretty tight right there. And I'm gonna talk about that for just a minute, okay? And so I like to see this wiper plate is adjustable okay and so what i like to see is for that wiper plate to start making pretty good pressure or friction right about at the end of that slot right here on that bill hook but that's a quick adjustment we can make and what that does in some ways what that does is kind of creates a a ratcheting force when this bill hook goes or when this wiper arm goes across that bill hook to wipe that knot off that way we get a good clean wipe of that knot off of that bill hook. That's kind of what the bill hook looks like. And so there's that little hook on the edge of that bill hook that grabs our, and this thing is turning by the way, and so it grabs the twine and as it's turning, okay, and twist, the wiper arm comes across and wipes that off of that bill hook and pulls it out at the same time that it opens, okay? And that creates a pretty nice knot so keep that in mind that when we have these twine testers really really super tight we're putting a lot of pressure and a lot of force on this bill hook and this roller what i've seen quite a quite a few times is when we've we've made a tie and then we can see that we've got a knot hung on on one of these knotter assemblies okay we have a lot of guys that carry a flathead screwdriver in their toolbox. Okay, and they'll get right in this area. They'll get right in that area with their screwdriver and, and open that hook up to pop the knot out of the bill hook. Okay, and that puts a lot of strain on this. So be careful when you're doing that out in the field because you can damage and break the bill hook off. I liked for guys to carry an extra bill hook and an extra roll pin that attaches this bill hook in their toolbox just in case that happens out in the field at you know two or three o'clock in the morning and we're trying to build this alfalfa you've got an extra bill hook so that you can fix that we've got lights here on this upper door where we can see this knotter assembly at night pretty good and these pins that attach these knotter systems in their home position when you remove these pins also keep in mind that there is a magnet here that will hold your pins and your clips so that you don't lose those seen a few times that a pin got lost and then we were trying to find a bolt or something to stick in there to put that knotter back in the home position to get by and that does work by the way if you get in a bind one of the pre-season checks that i like to do is i like to inspect all of these rollers okay these upper slack arm rollers also these lower rollers here kind of like to take a good look at those and make sure none of those are stuck or warm to make sure that we're getting a good amount of grease up here so you can run this boater for a little while and you can actually adjust how much you want it to grease on the display but something i'll do is run the boater for a while and then i'll kind of get up here and look and make sure that i've got grease coming out of all of these areas where you can kind of see there that the grease is oozing out of the it's pretty good to, to make sure that we're getting plenty of grease up on this knotter assembly. Something else real quick to talk about is these eyelets or these loops, okay, that the twine runs through. As you can see there, there's a pretty good groove war in this loop. Okay, and I always like to take a look at those because those are replaceable, by the way, and you can get those through parts and they're pretty inexpensive. And that can create a lot of twine problems if we don't look at those. This baler's got about 16,000 bales on it. And you can see that we've got a pretty good little groove worn right there. Um, something you can do really quick if you've had that to wear a groove all the way through 
and it's binding your twine okay you can turn that okay and a lot of times it'll kind of stay wherever you turn it so now your worn spot is at the top and you've got good fresh loop at the bottom keep that in mind that you can turn those and adjust those and same goes here and then also same thing here on the side of the twine box i've had this happen several times i have seen that we have ran both balls of twine out when when we feed this twine through the side of the twine box through this little plate right here i've seen this a lot of times okay if you can see this twine is coming out of the top side of this twine box because these three twines are going to our upper and then these set of twines are going to our lower and what happens is if you get this twine accidentally installed on the wrong side of the spring loaded plate okay then it creates a lot of tension if that's coming out of the bottom side so now if we do that we've created a tension problem up at the top and i've seen a lot of guys start adjusting that upper tensioner when the problem is actually here instead of up at the top keep that in mind if you run out of twine and you're re-threading this uh baler with twine we've talked a lot about the nodder system on this l340 that seems to be a majority of the calls that i get on these balers is to do with knot problems and uh twine and knots hanging up in the bill hooks and and that kind of thing and a lot of that is contributed to twine tension okay and so i like to at least try to get a set of fish scales on there and do this twine tension adjustment the right way uh, at the beginning of every year so that we can kind of eliminate a lot of those knotter problems also get this call quite a bit and i want to show you real quick up inside of the bell chamber on this l340 and this would be pretty much the same on the l341 as well these are what i call the hay dogs okay right there there's an upper and a lower hay dogs and then there's also some if you can kind of see up at the top here okay and they're spring loaded okay and so what i found a lot of times when we have deformed bales and we can't figure out why our bales are banana shaped so to speak and they come out of the bell chamber and they just don't look nice and square on the ends the first thing that i'm doing is i'm checking these hay dogs okay and the reason being is because these hay dogs have a pin okay that connects these hay dogs from the outside that they actually pivot on okay and so i've seen two different things i've seen the little spring that returns it broke and then i've also seen the first flake of hay that comes through here the hay dogs go out okay and then they do not return because it's been setting out maybe and the uh, pins had a lot, have a lot of build up in there and it won't pivot anymore so it gets stuck out so it's no longer holding that flake of hay also something i like to look at every year if you can get the baler cleaned out and take a look at these scrapers right here on the side there is a spec for that these scrapers are adjustable and so we don't like to see those scrapers like rubbing the side of the bell chamber so we might have to loosen those off and move those occasionally to get those right and i have seen a few years when a guy's bailing hay that's too wet and we get a lot a lot of build up right here around these hay dogs and in between the plunger and the bell chamber okay and a lot of that's just contributed from bailing up hay that's too wet man i don't know if you can tell but it is like super super windy out here in southwest oklahoma today we're in a wind advisory and expecting to see up to 60 to 70 mile an hour gusts here in just a little while and uh so it's gonna get a little crazy out here today but we're gonna continue on with adjusting making some adjustments on this knotter system and i'm going to show you real quick what we're going to adjust we're going to look at the twine disc timing we're we're finding that some of these twine discs are out of time and by quite a bit on some and i'll show you one that we've kind of been playing with and adjusted on a little bit but but the twine disc adjustment is pretty critical and sometimes if it's 
if the twine disc is advanced too much then it can create a longer tail on the knot and then cause that knot to hang up in the bill hook and i've seen this quite a bit and so pretty important step is to adjust these twine disc and what we're looking for on these twine disc and i'll show you kind of what we're looking at and where to measure that at um, it should be the twine disc and the twine disc holder in the in the home position we should be seeing plus or minus one millimeter which is really hard to gauge but i'll show you a quick way that i've found to gauge that we're looking at this disc right here and then this notch right there so what we're seeing is there's not a very good gap in between the twine disc and the twine disc holder so we need to make that adjustment so i'm going to show you one that we adjusted on number three here so we've got this one adjusted and so what we're looking for is right in this area if you can kind of see that right in this area right here we're looking for plus or minus one millimeter which is really hard to measure but what i like to see is just a very little bit of this ear sticking out past the twine disc holder that's kind of the uh kind of the measurement that i go by quite a bit in the field I wanted to make mention of this real quick that a zip tie the very end of a zip tie in other words this portion right here of an r44302 zip tie is right about one millimeter give or take a little and so that's a pretty good quick measurement to use if you don't have a caliper you can use one of these uh, zip ties to to look at that measurement on your twine disc timing look at that one it's pretty far away from the twine disc holder to make that adjustment is to loosen this nut off this worm gear is on a tapered shaft so it's really not keyed in any way it's just held on there by the tapered shaft and the the worm gear is tapered so when we tighten that nut down it, it actually locks that in place where we want it to be and so we're gonna we're gonna move this back just a little ways we need to hold that gear in the loaded position so when the knotter is in the home position the tooth of this gear and this worm gear needs to be locked against each other on the load side of the tooth so i'm putting my putting my screwdriver kind of right in between the worm gear and the tooth of the drive gear that drives the twine disc and i'm going to hold that there pretty snug and then tighten the nut down on the bottom of the shaft keep in mind that tightening this worm gear and locking it onto that shaft does not have to be like super super tight okay and i believe the spec in the book is around 25 foot pounds i believe all right and then also after we make that adjustment we need to look at the twine holding pressure shims right here or these load plates the measurement for that is going to be right here on this bolt that holds these tension plates against the load side of that twine disc underneath so what we're looking for here is a measurement between this outer plate and the side of the twine housing after adjusting the twine disc timing okay then we're also going to look at the twine holding pressure i've raised this knotter assembly up where you can get a better look at that one quick thing that you can do is raise one of these knotters up kind of like i have it here if you drop that you shouldn't see that fall all the way so it stops right there pretty easy but if i raise that up and drop it and it goes all the way back down then our wiper plate is probably a little bit too loose i'm going to show you here this is the leaf spring and it's kind of a double leaf spring so there's two of those in place okay and this is the knotter frame okay this green housing okay so the measurement that we want to make okay is between the edge of this outer leaf and the knotter frame okay and the measurement or the distance on that should be 15 and a half to 17 millimeters from this point to this point okay 
And the way we adjust that is by tightening this cap screw to obtain that measurement so that we have proper twine holding pressure. One of the quickest ways to do that and probably the only way that works really the best for me is to use a caliper. Okay, and I'll usually just dial in my 15 and a half millimeter with my caliper. It just seems like it does a better job at about that 15 and a half. So I try to stay on the low side of that measurement. And so you can see where I've got my caliper placed. We probably should tighten that one up just a little bit. So the measurement we've got there is about 16 and a half. If you can see that, we're right at about 16 and a half. Okay, which is probably okay. But like I said, I like that 15 and a half pretty good. Seems like it does a good job. We've adjusted the wiper arm here on all six of our knotter assemblies here. And if it stays and doesn't fall all the way down, then uh, we've got that wiper plate adjusted pretty good. We're turning the baler over now and running through a quick, slow, manual tie out. So I've got a couple guys on front of the baler turning the flywheel so we can actually see what's going on here at the knotter. So our needles are bringing the twine up through the twine disc and the holder. And as you can see, there's two upper and lower twine coming through the knotter assembly as the needles pass through. So the twine is being grabbed by the twine disc and holding the twine. Okay, and the bill hook is about to pass through and grab the twine and tie us a nice knot. Fixing to tie our first knot and you can see the needle is going down and so it's going to grab the second knot as it passes back through the knotter assembly. Okay, we're just about to wipe the first knot off of the bill hook. Keep going. Okay. All right, now our first knot is made. So we made all the adjustments to this L340 knotter system. We ran it through a manual tie cycle, tied six nice knots, one through six. So we're gonna send this baler on home and we'll be belling some alfalfa up here in a few weeks. I uh, hope that uh, some of the tricks and tips that we showed help you. And uh, we'll uh, talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Larry the Tractor Guy, signing out.